Hey, what's up guys and welcome to a new tutorial in which we're going to um, basically cover how to put one of your... What I'm going to show is our previous Python script with the Discord bot. I'm going to put it up on Amazon Web Services or AWS, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to show how you set that up on EC2, their um, compute unit. And then we're going to basically just show how you can run it on a separate system that can run in the background. And so you don't have to run the script directly on your computer. So if you have something that you want done frequently or all the time like we do, then you can just throw it up on AWS. So basically the process is going to be you're going to go to AWS. You can just Google it. I'll have a link in the description. You sign up for an account. It's going to require you to enter your credit card information, but they do have a free tier that offers you kind of not limited, but not a ton. It'll give you like a gig of RAM and like 30 gigs of storage or something like that. And it's, it's plenty. It'll give you 750 hours every month for the next year. So it's a pretty good deal. And so that's why I chose this instead of Heroku or a couple other services, Azure. So we'll just get right into it. You make your account, like I said, and then you'll jump in and you'll go to services and then you'll go to compute. You go to EC2. And then what you're going to want to do, yours might look a little bit different. You're going to want to click on launch instant. And then you can pick whichever version you want. They've got all kinds of different images. These are basically your base files. So some of them, like they had one up here, I think. That's for deep learning. It's already got TensorFlow and a bunch of other stuff installed. So that's kind of nice. But what we're going to do is we're going to start with Ubuntu. And so I'm just going to select that. And then you can see this, this tier is free tier eligible. It gives you one virtual CPU, one gig of memory. And everything else is pretty standard. But they, they have much, much larger things. So you can get 64 vCPUs and 256 gigs of memory. It can, it can scale up as much as you want. And you can just pick whichever amount you want. But... We're going to stick with the micro because the Discord bot doesn't particularly use very much. So I clicked review and launch. I'm going to cl click launch because all the defaults are fine. And then what it's going to want you to do is to make a key pair. And so this is sort of like we did with the Discord bot where it's going to make a key for you. And that's how you're going to log in. So I already have a key, but I'm going to make a new one just so I can show. I'm going to do Discord tutorial and I'm going to do download key pair. And then you're going to want to keep that and kind of take note of where it was placed. And then I'm going to say launch instant instance, sorry. And then it started stuff up and you're going to end up here. And I have one stopped instance. That's the instance I was testing on. And then we have this new one that's coming in. And it's starting to initialize and do the fresh install and all of that. And then in the meantime, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to, if you already have PuTTY installed, you can just skip to this part. But if not, you're going to want to install PuTTY first. Um, I'll have a link in the description. It's pretty simple. You just download and install. And basically what we are going to do is along with putty there is this thing called putty gen and what that does is it takes our key and it puts it into a format that putty can use putty is basically our method for accessing this cloud server so right now it's running but we don't have any way to interact with it so we're going to ssh into it and what we're going to do is we're going to use this key, but we need it in a format that we can use. So I'm using my Discord tutorial one. What I did is I clicked load, and then it's going to pre-sort for PPK. What you're going to want to do is all files, and then go to Discord, 
and then you pick the one that you're interested in and it's going to give you a little prompt just say OK and then what you're going to want to do is save private key and what this is doing is it's putting in a format that putty can use as I was saying so I'm going to put this on my desktop over here and I'm going to name it discord I'm gonna name it exactly the same thing just to be consistent and then I'm gonna put dot ppk I was trying this earlier and I was having a pretty huge issue with if I didn't put dot ppk it would just say that it was rejecting the token so if you're having that issue definitely recommend manually putting dot ppk even though it should automatically add it so now I've saved the private key with putty gen and then I've got that in an easy to reach place and then what I'm gonna do is I opened up putty and what I'm gonna do with this is we're going to take if you look over here we have this public DNS this is the IP address of the server and what we're going to want to do is we're going to take this over to putty and we're going to enter that in for the host name or IP address and then at the beginning we're going to put Ubuntu because that's the username and you put Ubuntu at that IP address and this is this might be different depending on what um, operating system or image you chose some of them are EC2 users some of them are just root and so you'll have to look and read their guide and see what they recommend you log in with for the Ubuntu ones they say do Ubuntu at and then that IP address so and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this as discord tutorial I'm gonna save that so now next time you want to access it you can just double click on this and it'll open up but what we haven't done yet is we have not chosen the key so the first thing we need to do is we go SSH hang on first we go connection SSH auth and then we go to browse to find our key and then we find it right here discord tutorial .ppk. and then I'm gonna open it up and it's gonna give you a little warning saying that it wants to cache the um, key and I'm just gonna say yes and then there we go we're on to our Amazon Web Services server so that's pretty big step next thing we are going to do is we're going to prepare things so we can run our um, Python script so the first thing we're gonna do I don't have this totally memorized so I'm gonna kind of go along with the errors here I'm gonna say pip3 install discord.py and then it says pip3 is currently not installed and so what we're gonna do is sudo apt install python3 pip because that's what it tells us to do to install pip or pip3 sorry and it says it cannot find hang on let me try something sudo apt python3 oh I didn't need the 3 there okay python3 pip there we go and then I just say yes goes through the entire thing and it says error I'm gonna say yeah let's do sudo apt get update it's gonna that's that command sudo apt get update is basically updating all of the basic Ubuntu packages so we've updated that now and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to installing Python 3 pip so that we can install discord py using pip and so we put that command in again and then we hit yes 
and it's just going to go through the entire process downloading and unpacking and installing everything should be done in a second okay there we go and now we can do pip 3 it's pip 3 instead of just normal pip so that you can um, denote that it's for python 3 and so pip3 install discord.py and it should grab everything there we go installed successfully and then now what we can do is we can do let's do python3 um, what am I gonna do oh just kidding I have to go so now we have to transfer our file over there so I'm gonna open up FileZilla I'm gonna have the, the link in the description again if you don't have it don't worry about it the link will be in the description and you can just install it it's a simple process and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here we're gonna click the open site manager button and now we're gonna basically do the whole SSH process into the server but we're going to do it using FTP, which is File T Transfer Protocol, so we can transfer our file over there. So I'm going to do a new site after I clicked on the Site Manager, and then what we're going to do is we're going to copy in the host name, and we're going to do SFTP, this is SSH File Transfer Protocol, and then the login type, we're going to use key file, and then our user is going to be Ubuntu, like we did before. And then the key file is going to be our same Discord tutorial key file. And then what we can do is, I'm going to actually rename this Discord And then we can go ahead and connect. And you can see we're all connected there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take our Discord tutorial um, Python um, code. And I'm just going to drag it and drop it straight into the root directory. Or the home Ubuntu directory, rather. And so now we've got our code that we've written and we put it on our server using SFTP. And we can go back over here. And I can just say Python 3. Um, and then I can do discord tutorial.py and it just automatically recognizes that. If you hit tab, it'll autofill the rest of it. And so we can do that. And you can see it's running our Python code now. And that's pretty good. But the problem with that is that now we have to do that manually every single time. So if we log out, this code is going to end. So it's basically the same as just running it on our computer. We still have to have it. We, we kind of have to make a conscious effort of running it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control Z out of there, stop the process. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called a cron tab. And so basically, you type in cron tab dash e to edit the cron tab. And it's going to make you choose an editor. I'm going to do nano because that's just what they recommend. I haven't really tried the other ones. I've always just used nano. Um, but you just type 2, enter, and then it takes you to the cron tab. And what the cron tab does is basically it allows you to schedule tasks in the future and so basically they've got this entire file written here and you can see that it allows you to schedule things by the minute the hour the day of the month the month and the day of the week so say you wanted something done at midnight every day on or every month on wednesdays that's that's something you could schedule with the cron tab and so what we're going to do is we're going to basically have it set up so that let's say we want it to run let's start it at I'm trying to pick a time 
Um, let's just say three in the morning. And the way this works is basically the zeroth minute, the third hour, we're using military time, so that would be three in the morning. And then the asterisks mean every, basically. So every day of the month, every month, every day of the week. And then we're going to run some code. And so I'm going to say Python 3. And then I'm going to say Discord Tutorial dot py would help if I spelled that right and then I'm also gonna add the ampersand sign or the and sign <coughs> in order to make it run as a background process just as a little bonus it's not totally necessary but it's generally a good thing to do um, and then also what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make it so that I'm going to make it so that at 2 in the morning, at 2.58 in the morning, to be precise, I'm going to make it reboot. So I'm going to do sudo reboot. And so basically, I know that every day in the morning, it's going to restart the in it, It's just going to restart Linux, Ubuntu, and then it's going to run this thing. So we already kind of assume that our script is going to just run indefinitely successfully but just to be a little bit extra um, sure what I'm doing is I'm making it so it restarts every day at 3 in the morning so we for sure never have to touch it if something goes wrong it's just gonna reboot the next day and start running again so if you want to you can go in and manually reboot it and start it but it's going to do it on its own anyway. So if you notice it's down at 6 p.m., you know it's going to be working again by the next day, most likely. So basically, that's what we're going to do with the cron tab. And then we're going to do Control X to leave. And we press Y if we want to save. And then we hit Enter to confirm our changes. And then that should pretty much be it. That's That should pretty much get you where you need to be. One thing I am going to mention is that because these are cloud servers, they use UTC time. So it's not going to be like, I was just looking at it and it's 3 p.m. for me, but UTC is um, hour 21. So it's like several hours ahead. And so what you can do is you can type in date and it's going to pop out. You see it's the 22nd hour, 32nd minute, 24th second. So when you're planning your schedule, you have to plan off of this time. Otherwise, you're going to be totally screwed up and you're going to be several hours off. But that should be it for our tutorial on putting your script on Amazon Web Services. I am still looking at making a voice module tutorial for the Discord bot, but I'd like to kind of um, smooth out all of the kinks first. What I'm working on is um, my plan at least with the voice module is to make something so that people can basically opt into Teams. You basically start a command where you say make Teams and then all the people who want to participate in Teams can enter and then it'll randomly split you up into different um, teams in the voice channels. So you can just say, hey, we've got these eight people trying to play, make teams, all the people enter in that they want to play. And then it's going to split you up into teams of two into four different voice channels so that um, you can um, just um, start playing like that. But that's off in the future. We'll see when that comes. Um, but that should be it. That is Amazon Web Services.